Amen. We can never thank him enough for what he's done for us. Uh, I'm going I'm to say this this morning. Um, uh, I'll, I'll take it that uh, Felicia, you gave my introduction this morning. Um, no, that's fine. Um, so we are going into Ephesians chapter 1. Um, so if you'll turn your Bibles there with me this morning. We actually, uh, as uh, Felicia had said in Sunday school this morning, we uh, talked um, a good bit Wednesday night after service. Uh, and we were talking about the Christian life and um, just about who we are as Christians. And um, so I want to share, I want to uh, share not just uh, my, necessarily my opinion with you this morning about who we are, but I want to I show you through the Scripture exactly who the Holy Spirit inspired Paul to tell the church at Ephesus to remind them who they were. Now if you um, look at the church at Ephesus and the city of Ephesus, uh, Ephesus was at, at, it, at this time was one of the great uh, places in the world. It was a banking capital. It was a, a worship capital, not necessarily of the one true God, uh, but the Temple of Diana was there, which was a huge, massive, just uh, unbelievable place, uh, no doubt, physically speaking. Uh, there was all kind of... It was on a major trade route. There was... Just a lot of stuff happened in Ephesus. And the people, the, uh, most of the people were newfound Christians. They were had just, uh, the people that were involved in the one true church there, they had just, uh, you know, came into a, a knowledge of Christ, a lot of them, and believing and putting their heart and their life and their soul into the worship of Christ. And Paul was giving them a reminder about who they were. And, you know, once we have come into that personal relationship, God's desire for all of us is to experience the full benefit of having a relationship with Him. But I think so many times, so many Christians, we don't experience, and I'm going to put it like this, we don't experience the full package. We don't get the full package. We get the salvation. We get the trip to heaven whenever we die or whenever Christ comes back, whichever comes first for you. But folks, I'm telling you so, and, and I told you this Wednesday night, or I think it was, or last Sunday, we don't realize the power that is locked up inside of us. And we're the ones that hold the key. It's not like God has hidden it somewhere and we've got to look for it. He's laid it right out. He's given us, and I'm going to call this this morning, He's given us a treasure map. And He's given us a map to finding the key to living a not only successful Christian life, because if I left it there this morning, we could ask the question, well, what is a successful Christian life? I think a successful Christian life is living the, uh, under the power and authority of God, experiencing the fullness of God, His Spirit, His presence, winning souls to Christ, fulfilling your purpose in Jesus. All those things are what uh, I feel like is a successful Christian life. You know, so we want to live not only a successful Christian life, but we want to live a satisfying Christian life. And the Christian can never be satisfied until he realizes not just who Christ is, but who we are in Him. Who we are in Christ. So I'm going to start you out. I know we are, we're in the book of Ephesians. We're going to go through this this morning. But I first want to give you this verse. 2 Corinthians five seventeen. Very familiar passage of Scripture. 2 Corinthians five seventeen. If any man or woman be in Christ. Be in Christ. He is a new creature. He is a new creation. He is born again. He is recreated in Christ Jesus. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. That's that old way of thinking. That's that 
Oh, let's see, and uh, uh, I'll just, I'm going to use the word Felicia used this morning uh, to sum up what she said was confidence. That's uh, realizing that not having our confidence in our righteousness but having our consciousness in, in our confidence in God's righteousness. And the fact that He lives in us. And that we have that power in us. The Scripture says, and we're going to read it here in a minute, the power that it took to raise Jesus from the dead. That is the power that lives in you. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. A new way of thinking. We're just going, I'm going to give you what God's given me as we go. So I'm going to give you another verse. Romans chapter 12, verse number 2. Or verse number 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, make your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse number 2 says, But be not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. A new way of thinking. He says, uh, Be not conformed to this world, but you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. I want to be found this morning in His will, don't you? Amen. I want to live out the rest of my days on this earth in His will. I want to be right where God wants me to be. And if that's in the middle of a mess, praise God, I'll mess it up even worse. Amen? Let's just get right where God wants us to be. That's what our desire should be this morning. All right, Ephesians chapter number 1. I'm going to let you remain seated this morning as we go through this. I'm going to read this whole chapter to you. We're going to get as far as we can go with it this morning. Uh, to show us exactly who you are. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. So he's saying this is to this specific church, but it's also to all believers. He says, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through His blood and forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace, wherein He hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure which He hath purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in Him." in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of Him who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will, that we should be to the praise of His glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest or the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us, word, who believe according to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead, set Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places, 
far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is the body. And look what it says about the church right here in verse 23. Read 22 again. And hath put all things under his feet and gave to him to be the head over all things, the church, which is his body, the fullness of him. The church should be the fullness of him that filleth all in all. The church should satisfy the world. The church should satisfy you. Why? Because it's the body of Christ. And it should fill all in all. What's that word all mean? All. Oh, it means all. So look at your neighbor this morning and say, Neighbor, do you really know who you are? Do you really know who you are? Now he says in this scripture, he lays it out just as plain as day who we are as, as Christians. This is from the point of view of God the Father. This is from the point of view of God the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. This is from the inspiration and the point of view of the Holy Spirit. He is telling us who we are. We are saying first of all in verse 3 that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings. That means we have access. Romans chapter 5, verse number 1 says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. We have peace with God, in whom also we have access into this grace wherein we stand. He says, and he goes on in that scripture, and he begins, he tells us what we have, and then he goes to talking about life. He begins to tell us, knowing this, that tribulation of worketh patience, and patience worketh hope, and hope worketh experience, and experience maketh not, and, and experience worketh hope, and hope maketh not a shame. He tells us in that scripture that you're going to go through some stuff in life. There's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, there's going to be problems, there's going to be things beyond your control. But if you'll just realize who you are, that you have been justified. By faith that you have been made right with God according to faith. If we could just grab a hold of that and quit trying to work our way into God's good graces and realize that His grace is sufficient for us. Um, His grace will give us, He says He'll give us all sufficiency in all things. He tells us His grace will abound toward us. It's moving toward us. And we're the only one that can stop it. If we just realize who we are in Christ Jesus. He says we have been given all spiritual blessings. And I like the part he says in heavenly places. In Christ. Because, see here's the deal. I wonder why, why, I wonder why he said that. He said you have been given all spirit, you have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. All right, heavenly places, we think about heaven. No man can take that from you. Why? Because it's in a heavenly place. I cannot reach up into heaven and get steal or take away your spiritual blessings, right? Because no man has entered into heaven, right? He has blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places. That means that man can't take it away from you. You can only allow, you can only give it away, or you can only uh, forfeit your blessings in Christ. Now if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Old ways of thinking, old attitudes, old, uh, old desires. And all things have become new. My nature is now new. My Who I am is now new. I'm not the same person, you know, um, as these, uh, uh, Tommy shared his testimony with you this morning. You know, I'm sure there's people in his life that would say, uh, before salvation and now after salvation... 
that he's not the person he used to be. You know, I know I've had people in my own life say, you know, uh, people that knew me back then and people uh, that knew me after, know me now, and they'd say that's not the same person. Old things have passed away. That old nature, yes, is still there, but praise God, sin hath no more dominion over us. Don't mean we don't sin, but praise God, let me tell you, sin doesn't control my life. No, it's not about sin, it's about Him. It's not about sin, it's about Christ. It's not about works, praise God. It's about grace. For by grace are you saved and not of works. Let me tell you something, it's not of ourselves. Praise God, salvation came from Him. Didn't any of us deserve it? But praise God, as a child of God, you deserve to keep it. Amen. Let me tell you something this morning. He tells us that we have been given spiritual blessings in heavenly places, and not just in heaven, but praise God, in Christ. And what I know, Christ lives in me. In Christ. In you. The Christ in you. He says, according as He hath chosen us. Man, I tell you what, God could have picked somebody better than me. And you can, you can say, put that on any level. God could have picked somebody better than me to save. God could have picked somebody better than me to preach. God could have picked somebody better than you to teach. God could have picked somebody better than you to sing. God could have picked somebody better to use. But praise God, He chose you before the foundation of the world because He knew when He created you and especially when He recreated you that He was going to put something in you that would be valuable to Him. I'm going to fall off the stage if I had one of the things though. He was going to put something in you that is valuable to you. Valuable to Him. And what it is, is His Holy Spirit. That Scripture says when we came to know Him, we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. We were sealed. Praise God. What, you know, it, it wasn't like the seal on the tomb. This one can't be broken. This is the seal that Jesus Christ put on it Himself. He said, hey, that's mine. And I don't care. Well, you know, I look at it like this. My daddy, um, you know, my daddy been preaching about 50 years now. Uh, my daddy, I've done a lot of foolish things in my life. My daddy's whipped me, beat me, uh, all that kind of stuff that we need as kids. Let me say hallelujah. Drop cords, hose, you know, hose pot. All that stuff, I've got all that over the years. But let me say this, praise God, no matter what I did, I was still my daddy's son. He couldn't take that away. There wasn't no way. Well, because we was blood kin. Let me tell you something. My heavenly Father today, it don't matter. Once I become His, I am His. And there ain't a thing in the world I can do or He can do or nobody else can do to change that because I am His. He is mine. I've been bought with the precious blood of Christ. Amen. We ought to realize this morning who we are. We are a child of the Most High God. Look at your neighbor this morning and say, Neighbor, He's the Most High God. Hey, praise God, neighbor, and I'm His. Let me tell you something. We've got to understand that we are children, chosen children. Look, I didn't get to choose my daughter. She came out with a, uh, you know, a mixture of me and Marilyn. She looks like me. She's about three foot tall like Marilyn. Let me tell you something. She can't, you know, she was a mixture of us both. I didn't get to choose her. I didn't get to do that. But God said, I'll choose you knowing you ain't going to be perfect. Knowing you're going to mess up. No, He said, I knew you before in the womb. Before you was even in the womb, I knew who you were. He said, I know it was going to be bad. I know it was going to be rough being your daddy. But praise God, I chose to be anyway. And He chose you from the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. That's an awesome God. That's a God that's worth serving. That is a God that I want to dedicate and commit my life to. Who? And there's only one way to do it. We just sung about it. He is the way. He is the truth. And praise God, He is my life. He is our life, church. He predestinated us. He chose us before the foundation of the world that we should be holy. 
And without blame before Him in love. Now, get a picture of that. That we should be... He chose us that we should be holy. Lord knows He knew I couldn't be holy. Why did He choose me to be holy when He knew I couldn't be holy? He, choose, he, he says in that Scripture that, he, uh, that we should be holy and without blame. Is there anybody in here that's without blame? Good gracious. I get blamed for stuff all the time, don't y'all? A lot of it I don't even do, but isn't it amazing? I know it happens to you too. You get blamed for stuff. After a while, you just finally say, hey, just blame me. Hey, don't y'all ever do that? I do it all the time. Something happens in the church, somebody don't want to take the fall for it, I'll say, hey, just tell them I said it. Just tell them I did. I don't care. Hey, I'll take the blame. I'm going to take it for some other stuff anyway. So hallelujah. He, he knew we couldn't be holy. He knew we couldn't be blameless. Why in the world did He choose us uh, to be that? He says in that script before Him in love and He knew we didn't have perfect love. But praise God, that's why He sent Jesus. Because He knew there was one that was holy. He knew there was one that was blameless. They knew he, hey, And He even knew He would be blamed for stuff He didn't do. But he knew that he would be ridiculed. He knew that he would suffer. He knew that he would go through persecution. But he said, if you allow him to cover you. When I look at you, when I look down from heaven at you, my child, he said, I won't see your unholiness. I won't see all the blame and all the shame and all the sin. He said, if you'll be covered in Christ. See, as long as I'm in Him, you can't see me. All you can see is Him. Praise God. And He said, when I look down out of heaven to look upon you, my child, I won't see you. I'll see Him. I'll see His righteousness. I'll see His love. I'll see what He did in you. I'll see the difference that He made. He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy without blame before Him in love. He's seen before God in love. Before Him, when I stand before Him, I praise God, I don't stand alone. Do you? We don't stand alone. Verse 5, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself according to the good pleasure of His will. Now I'm just going to briefly mention this predestinated thing because it gets repetitive. I know some people have preached predestination in the fact that God knew if you, you know, God had set aside a certain number of people that were going to go to heaven and you were one of them, so you was predestinated. It doesn't work like that. What a predestination is, is He predestinated every one of us. He determined every one of us an opportunity to have an eternity with Him in heaven. You were predestinated to be able to receive salvation. It was made available to you. And God's greatest desire is that you would come into His family and be His child. That's all predestination is. You were predestinated. You were chosen. You were picked to have an opportunity to have that relationship. He says, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children to come into the family of God by Jesus Christ. Why? Because that's the only way. To get into the family. He says, by the, uh, uh, let's, let's see here. Unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will. Look. This morning, we hold a high position. And yes, I'm going to say this, yes, um, salvation is absolutely free. But a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ will cost you a lot. And I'm not talking about it'll cost you a lot of work. Because Lord knows, we all know we can't work our way in heaven. 
We can't work our way into God's good graces. But let me tell you something. What it's going to cost you is it's going to cost you yourself. It's going to cost you your life. It's going to cost you every your old way of thinking. It's going to cost you your old way of living. It's going to cost you all those things. But folks, what we don't understand because of the fact of the matter that we're children, that we've been brought in, we've been adopted into the family of God, is that if we'll, uh, if we'll uh, accept that fact, if we'll accept who we are and the responsibility we have and the position that we hold, we will tap into our access the benefit of being that child. Not stepchildren. In many cases. So He tells us that He predestinated us to have that opportunity. He has made us accepted. to the. He says in verse 6, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He has made us accepted in the Beloved in whom we have redemption. Through His blood we've been bought back. We have forgiveness of sin according to the riches of His grace. Folks, praise God, it's like a well springing up. Aren't you glad today that if you mess up today, you can come and seek forgiveness of God and He freely forgives you if you do it with a sincere heart? But guess what? If you mess up tomorrow, He'll do the same thing tomorrow. And if you mess up next week, guess what? He's there. He's there ready. If you come with a sincere heart, ready to seek forgiveness, it's yours. And this goes to love beyond what I can even explain to you this morning. He loves us so much that He already knows what you're going to do next Thursday. And He's already forgiven you already. Hey, ain't that a mate? Hey, that may not do nothing for you, but that does something for me. He's, a, he's two steps ahead of me all the time. Let me tell you, He knows I'm going to mess up. He knows exactly how I'm going to mess up. And He forgives me already. Now I can prove that to you. I just I'll put it like this. Do you believe that if you leave this service today, you a child of God, you leave this service today, you go out here and, and something happens to you and you get hit by a car or something and you die instantly, do you believe you're in, you'll be in heaven? What if you didn't ask forgiveness for sin this morning? You'd still be there. Why? Because He died for past, present, and future, didn't He? Amen. Let me tell you, praise God, He covered it all. I like that old song, Jesus, Jesus paid it all, praise God. And let me tell you something, that's what He's talking about. He paid all of that. Past, He paid for the present, He paid for the future. And praise God, we have availability. We have access to that as children of the Most High God. We have access to that this morning. He's made us accept us. He re redeemed us. He bought us back by hanging on that old rugged, rugged cross. And I must go end it right here. We'll get through verse 8. I'll get the rest next Sunday. Look what verse 8 says. Wherein He hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. We've been talking about wisdom on Wednesday nights. Let me tell you something. I'll just put it like this. God is chasing you down with His grace. God is chasing you down with His wisdom. God is chasing you down with His revelation. He is constantly pursuing His children to give them all that He has. He is constantly pursuing you to help you have a better relationship. He's constantly pursuing you to help you experience more of His amazing grace. More of His wonderful uh, mercies and His tenderness. And praise God, thank God that His mercies are never failing. That they're new every morning. Praise God, that's the God I serve. Let me tell you something, because, not because of my love for Him. I love Him a whole lot, but I only love Him because He first loved us, right? But let me tell you, because of how much He loves us, because of how much He loves us, He continues to work on us. Philippians 1, six. Be confident of this very thing, that He that has begun a good work in you 
will continue until the day of Jesus Christ. Praise God. As long as He's in my life, I ain't got nothing to worry about. You say, well, that's a foolish comment. No, it ain't. Marilyn will tell you, I don't worry about nothing. I don't, that stuff don't bother me. And it ain't me, it's my confidence in Him. Because let me tell you something, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me tell you something, He is worthy this morning to be praised. It's all about Him. Folks, and you are His child this morning. Sitting in the hand and the arms of God, safe and secure. And let's become satisfied. When we become satisfied in Jesus, those little trivial things that go on in church life, let me tell you something, they, they vanish. Because you ain't got time for that foolishness. You just want to pray in Jesus. Let's stand this morning if you want. Heads bowed and eyes closed this morning, if you don't mind. God has spoken to your heart this morning. We definitely want to invite you to come. There's no doubt His presence has been with us today. For no other reason, we ought to just thank you. Thank you, Lord, for showing up. Thank you, Lord, for showing us again just how faithful you are. Maybe you're here today and you had an appointment with God and God has spoken to your heart. And he said to you, you need a relationship. You've got plenty of religion, but you need a relationship this morning. He can give you, He can do exceeding above, above all you can ever ask Him for this morning. Maybe in your own Christian life, you say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. I don't feel powerful. I don't feel confident. I don't feel strong. I don't feel like God's using me. Make like a supplication. say, preacher, you know the Bible talks about prayers and supplication. Let me say to you, let me tell you my definition of a supplication. A supplication is begging God. And there's not one thing. Sometimes God needs to know exactly how serious we are about our relationship. He's here for you today, no matter what you need. Maybe you got somebody you want to pray for. Maybe some lost child or grandchild or spouse. Look, He's here for you. Take advantage of His presence. 